So as we are waiting for people to hop on for this conversation, bringing consciousness and embodiment into the communal relational field and what that means, especially as it comes to the way we engage in sexual dynamics. Before I begin this conversation, conversation that I would love to open up today is about what it means to bring consciousness and embodiment into how we engage in our interpersonal sexual dynamics and how that impacts community. And I really desire for this to be a conversation. So if there are questions that you have or thoughts or perspectives that arise for you that you have a desire to bring into the space or you'd like for me to speak more directly to, then please type in the comments below. Your presence here in this container of energy we are sharing together feeds me just as I am feeding you. There is connection in the giving and receiving that you and I are sharing here. And so much of this is about bringing presence and attunement to the way that we give and receive. And that's not just energy, that's words, that's sexuality, that's touch. So, where do I want to begin? I've been having a lot of really beautiful experiences lately in community where I've you know, been in communal environments and having really beautiful, deep, sweet drop-ins with brothers where we are allowing for our erotic energy to be present. The challenge in the culture that we experience right now is that a lot of us haven't learned how to inhabit our sexual energy and our lusty desire without turning off connection to our heart. 
there is this way that I see both through the clients that I work with and also my own personal journey in this realm is that when we go into higher bodily sensation experiences, into sexual experiences, often the level of sensation and intensity can be so high that we actually haven't cultivated the ability to stay present in our body. So we'll wind up checking out of our body and actually using the high levels of sensation as a way to check out of our body. And this is actually where so much sexual trauma occurs not necessarily because there is physical coercion, but because we don't live in a culture that currently promotes healthy expression and vulnerable expression in sexuality. And we also live in a culture that's very disembodied, meaning that many of us have lost connection with the lower part of our body because it is associated with our sexuality and it is associated with emotions and feelings that um, are often painful to feel. So what winds up happening often in sex is that it's such a vulnerable place, but we haven't been taught how to connect through the heart and our sexuality, is that we'll wind up checking out of our body and have this idea of what sex is supposed to look like. These are the noises that I'm supposed to make as a woman, this is how I'm supposed to act as a man, this is how I'm supposed to fuck. And the challenge with that is we're often, you can find that we're not actually connected to what our bodies yes and what our bodies no is in the moment. So we'll wind up allowing things to happen to us that our body isn't actually a full yes to. And so much about coming back into our body and resensitizing our bodies and connecting our heart with our sexuality is that all of us is on board when we're opening up our body to intimacy. That when we're opening our body and our legs to intimacy, we're matching that with how our heart opens to intimacy. Which means that to engage in connected sexuality means that if we, do we trust a person enough as much with our heart as we do with you know opening our legs and where is the disconnect there and what i've really been exploring and how this applies to communal dynamics is that we live and i know that i'm generalizing now some people um, get triggered by the fact that i make generalizations and i speak in generalizations on behalf of men i speak generalizations on behalf of women and i know that there are a multitude and spectrum of genders in our culture right now and what I find is I, I have conversations with a lot of men. I have conversations with a lot of women. And I am also, I design my life in such a way where this exploration of the underlying energetics of uh, sexuality and power and connection and intimacy pretty much is what I am living, breathing, practicing, teaching full time. So I have a lot of experience and patterns that I see. And... What I experience is that many people are, even though, you know, you're most likely if you're watching this video, you are a conscious human being or a person who is in the pursuit of embodied consciousness on a spiritual path. And the challenge is that we live in a hookup culture. At least I'm speaking to America. And by hookup culture, I mean uh, it's about the pursuit. It's hookup culture is something where um, we're, we're sexualizing, we're objectifying, we're projecting upon the person that we desire sexual intimacy with because there's some sort of validation involved. There is, there is this pursuit for some type of gratification or desire, but we're not actually connecting with the person on the heart level. And this is so much of what I engaged with in my my sexual career, well not my sexual career, my, my college career, uh, when I was in college, I probably had sex with, I'm going to say 50 men, maybe, maybe 40, maybe 50 men, something like that. And I was in such pursuit of wanting to find a partner that I would just create this story about any man that I came into relative intimacy with about who they could be in my life. And I was so attached to this idea of falling in love and finding my partner that um, I wound up 
choosing men who um, weren't really looking for connection, which was really just a mirror for me because I wasn't really looking for connection. I was looking for, um, I was looking for someone to fulfill an idea in my mind of what partnership looked like. And I thought that if I had sex, that would lead to deeper intimacy, which would lead to love, which would lead to partnership. Hence is the past four or five years of my dismantling of, um, socially conditioned, um, structures and romantic relationship and, um, the artful and intentional crafting of relationship that supports my self-actualization and me being fully embodied and expressed of who I am in every moment. Mm. So I want to, I want to hear from y'all. Hello everyone. So here is, is how this applies in communal dynamics. What what I see is that so much of what we are needing right now with the breakdown in society, with the breakdown in the economic system, with the, um, with the raping of Mother Earth, with the breakdown in the dynamics between men and women, with the Me Too movement, with um, dominator culture, what I believe that we need are coming back into intimate community structures where we are intimately connected. This does not mean sexually connected. Intimately and connect sexually are two different things. Where we are intimately connected with the people in our smaller community and that we actually know the people that we are seeing on a daily basis. It can be very easy to engage in hookup culture and not take responsibility for our actions, not be in impersonal integrity, not be in alignment with our core energetic values and beliefs when we don't see the same people on a regular basis, when we're more isolated, when you know, you'll see someone at a party but you might not see them for another year. It can be, re it can be much easier to engage in ways of relating where we're not seeing and honoring the heart of the other person or where we are we're, uh, we have an agenda around what we want from a person and you know if we have a fling with them if we have a hookup and we know we're not going to likely see them again it can you know make it easier to not show up fully present embodied and aware of our impact through the way that we express and receive energy through the way that we share connection However, if we are individuals who really value community and want to experience more, more powerful and synergistic community dynamics, it's essential that we take responsibility for the impact of how we engage with other people in the community sexually and be aware of the impact on that community. Because if it's a small community and we're operating around hookup culture standards of uh, being available for physical and sexual intimacy but not being available for the deeper emotional intimacy in order to create a mutual sense of safety and a baseline of you're my brother, you're my sister, you are my kin, we are all in this together and regardless of whether or not we continue to have sex after this initial encounter, I care about you, I care about your heart, and I desire to be a part of creating more safety and more trust between the genders across the spectrum. So what it requires is um, a willingness to become more present in our sens sexual, and not even just sexual, but in community dynamics, becoming even more aware of, you know, when when we're in a community and there are people that we are attracted to, really becoming aware of how our, perhaps our own lust or desire for sexual satisfaction or pleasure might have us become less connected with the people that we long for in the community on a heart level because when our desire for sex, when our desire for romance comes online, if we're not really present and grounded in our bodies, it can be easy to create a story or a projection or actually create more disconnection. And by disconnection, I mean a lack of presence with what is true in the moment with the person that we are in pursuit of because 
There's a lot of vulnerability associated with opening up and being honest about how we feel. There's the fear of being rejected. There is There are all these protection mechanisms that so many of us have cultivated over the years to avoid being hurt in the ways that we were hurt when we were younger that they can actually result in us causing a similar form of harm that was inflicted upon us which caused the wound in the first place. So I'll give two examples. Uh, so a couple of weekends ago, I was at this 1500 person beautiful artistic creative gathering and it was a very permissive location for exploration of different states of consciousness. And I was on the volunteer crew for helping to support and just um, be in service to making the community with making sure the community was safe. And one of the clarifications that I asked with the leadership team was, so what is the protocol around um, inhabiting erotic energy in a group dynamic? Because obviously I understand that removing of sexual clothing and having sex in a communal space is most likely not appropriate in this environment. However, it's possible to inhabit a whole bunch of erotic energy with clothing on. And a primary core value for me in relationship and in community is energetic integrity. So I believe that there are ways that we can inhabit our erotic energy with another person that are actually incredibly connected, not only to each other, but to the impact on the communal space around us. And there are ways of engaging erotically and sexually with another person where we're actually feeding into a state of uh, like state addiction, pursuit of higher and higher sensation at the expense of connection, where we're not actually present to what is happening in the moment, but instead we are, we are present to the agenda. And this is actually a lot of the in-person work coaching that I do with men, because when, when we see the examples of what we have for what sexuality looks like, because we haven't been given more connected models of healthy sexual connection, porn winds up becoming the main method of learning how to have sex. And I'm not gonna speak negatively in porn in all circumstances. I watch porn and I actually can really enjoy watching pornography that is in resonance with what feels good in my nervous system. However, I would say probably 95% of the pornography out there is uh, men penetrating women before the woman's body is actually fully ready, open and available and desiring to receive a man inside of her. And this is not me speaking negatively upon men or women. This is actually just a culture of conditioning that we are all learning to systematically dismantle and replace. And sex as a result has also become very climax driven or agenda driven where the point of sex is to get to climax. And it tends to be much easier for men to access and experience climax than women because men and women's arousal tends to work differently. Similar to how women tend to have more access to our heart and our felt sense emotions, men tend to have less easeful access to that location. So in my work with men, a lot of what the, the practice is, is helping men to create a safe space where they can actually uh, access their e emotional experience and cr learn what it takes to create safety and connecting the emotional experience with sexuality. Bookmark. So, uh, where was I going with this? So, bringing it back in this conversation I was having with the leadership team, it was really this question of how do we create a space of approval for the erotic energy to be moved between you know, uh, two individuals or a group of individuals in a communal environment because it's my perspective that we don't have enough healthy spaces in society where we can create permission for erotic energy to be shared in a heart-centered space. And a lot of the group work that I do is specifically about creating communal environments that support the embodiment of deeper levels of intimacy and erotic energy that, that aren't at expense of connection to the heart. 
because what we really need in this culture right now, one of the many things that we need are healthy models of looking at what is it like when we don't stigmatize our sexual energy, but that I can actually be fully embodied in my erotic energy and as a woman who primarily identifies as heterosexual and attracted to men sexually, what does it look like for me to allow myself to be turned on and in an, an embodied aroused state where my erotic energy isn't just centered in my genitals, but cycling through my heart where I can actually feel deep heartfelt kinship love for this man while I am allowing for this juicy, delicious embodied exchange of erotic energy without going into story, without checking out, without pushing for something because when I have an agenda or when I try to take it somewhere, when we have a story, it's, it's often at the expense of connection. And there's a subtle shift that can happen in our energy when we actually start using the person. Because once we go into agenda, once we go into story, then on an unconscious, subconscious level, on an energetic level, we actually have an agenda about where we want to go and then we start unconsciously bringing that, per trying to manipulate that person to go in the direction that we want to go, which is not in service to connection. It's not in service to relationship. It's not in service to pleasure and embodiment and authenticity. And this is one of the places that we as a human species are being asked to evolve right now. And this is the unique way that my soul in this lifetime is meant to be of service. And it's a pleasure to be able to be here speaking with you in the way that I am. So, uh, I, I completed my shift and then later on one of the evenings I had this really beautiful connection with this one man where um, I was lying down and he just asked if he could put his hands on my head and it felt good energetically and I was like, yeah, I would love that. And he wound up just doing some very, I don't even know if he consciously realized if he was doing it or not, but he was just helping to move some really beautiful energy through my body and because I'm, I'm incredibly energetically attuned, I, I have a really powerful ability to move energy and also in, feel into a person's energetic system and get a sense of how connected they are to themselves, to their heart and to their ability to stay present in connection with another person. And the energy felt really good between us and I wound up in asking him if he'd like to go and lie down in the cuddle space in another room and just your energy with each other and it was one of the most beautiful experiences I've ever had in connection with a man we must have lied there for about three hours sharing energy with each other and what was so beautiful about it was when I when I connect with men erotically and women this is a really powerful way to guide men in erotic experiences without making them wrong for going too fast or for being too pushy. There is a way that we as women can inhabit our bodies energetically. And this is a big part of the work that I do with women is helping women to really connect with the truth and the desire and the, the embodiment that and the divine feminine wisdom that exists within them and trust it enough to be willing to energetically embody it and offer it and guide with it even if the people outside of you aren't validating that it's true. Because what we are learning to cultivate, the, the divine feminine wisdom, the divine feminine uh, Christ consciousness, which is emerging in the planet right now, on the planet right now, is, is a felt sense. It's a deep knowing. It's an intuitive insight, which does not have as much validity currently in our culture as does logic, as is the tangible, as is the visible. So as women, carriers of this divine feminine wisdom, we can be of service to men and helping to guide them and reconnect them to their own bodies through being willing to honor the truth that we feel in our body and validate it enough so that it is felt by the people around us. So I was very clear with this man that there was a lot of delicious, heartfelt, erotic energy between us. And I was also very clear that I didn't want to actively engage my sexual organs. I didn't want to go into a grindy space with him, at least initially. So I was guiding energetically with my body of we were in connection with each other. And there's a way that I was 
allowing my body and really my heart to lead with opening with him that created such a beautiful relaxation in both of our nervous systems and such a deep level of safety because there was such a mutual commitment. I know within myself when I felt within him to staying present to what is true in my heart, to what is true in his heart and where it feels most resonant to be in connection in this moment and to not try to go anywhere other than just, let's be curious about right here, right now. And through this, through this intimacy with each other, we just dropped into one of the most deeply loving and present heart spaces that I've ever experienced. And maybe about an hour in, we started to get into uh, kissing each other. And even with the kissing, I, I very intentionally waited to go right into kissing because again, when we're, when we're looking to cultivate and curate our erotic and sexual awareness, any place where we tend to rush into a certain experience like kissing or removing clothing or taking off uh, or, or penetrative sex, and this again, this is a big part of what I teach in workshops and with men and women and couples is learning how to slow down the progression of the erotic experience because so often, we physically rush into things before our entire emotional, energetic, spiritual, physical, intuitive body are all aligned full yes. And the reason this aligned full yes is so important is because one, we're creating integrity within ourselves, which is the most important thing we can do because that's how we learn to create safety in our own bodies as opposed to needing other people to act a certain way in order for us to feel safe. And two, because when all systems are aligned, that is where maximum state of openness, receptivity, and arousal occurs. And especially as women in our womb space, when we, we are receivers you know, in the sexual experience, that doesn't mean we can't penetrate men. It just means that for many of us, likely that's not as uh, prolific, but it is a very beautiful place to cultivate. It is through that alignment that our nervous system can actually feel on a deep energetic level I am safe because I am connected to my whole body and I trust myself to pace this experience at the rate that my whole being can open and feel alive and connected so there was this moment between he and I where I was like right up like so close to his lips like this this close and before I even kissed him, I just let myself smell his breath. I just let myself linger in that location of feeling, yes, it's available right now, and I don't need to rush into this. I want to make sure that everything that I do is because it's what I genuinely desire as opposed to because I saw a movie where this is the next thing that you do or I watched a porn where this is the next thing that you do. And... It just wound up being this deeper and deeper and deeper unfolding until eventually we got to a place where it felt really true to inhabit my deep, erotic, guttural sexuality. And it felt true to do that because my heart was so fully there. And that's the only way I desire to experience any type of erotic sexual connection is where the heart is fully there. So that was when he and I, and it was actually me majoritively, what I love about this connection is neither of us touched each other's genitals at all. There was no direct touching of the genitals, no removal of clothing. There was deep undulation on my part. And it got to this place where it was growing and growing and growing to the point where the, the woman who was handling sexual ethics in the, in the communal group container wound up coming in and tapping us on the shoulder and she's like, hey y'all, this is absolutely gorgeous and the, the, the erotic energy is becoming a bit too big for the space so could you find another zone to bring this? And I so appreciated her communication. It was very heartfelt, it wasn't shaming. I'd actually been wanting to meet her, so I wound up attracting her into my field in that way, and it was gorgeous. Um, and, and it was just a really beautiful experience because in that moment it was actually like the perfect peak 
to, to conclude that connection and have a really beautiful mutual acknowledging and sharing of gratitude between he and I for the shared energy. One of the things that he shared with me was, uh, thank you for trusting me with that experience. And you know what it felt so good to say was, thank you for being a man that I can feel is worthy of my trust in this location. And I remember walking uh, with a woman later that evening at a, uh, you know, in, in the hallways and I was sharing with her about the experience and she asked me, how did you know that you could trust him? Like, how did you feel safe? Like, didn't you feel nervous about opening up yourself erotically in that way? And I said, I knew I was safe because I felt the ease in my body and I'm connected enough to my body and trust myself enough that I'm actually able to open up and feel energetically where he was at within himself and the level of presence he was having with me because I can energetically feel when a person is operating from agenda or when there's more of a hip hooky or suction cup energy and I could feel there was purity in the energetic connection between he and I and I also trusted myself to be connected to my yes and my no every step of the way and I also trust the divine feminine wisdom and the, the priestess energy that exists within me to guide a man in the unfoldment of erotic and energy and an erotic experience and because I've done a lot of work around healing my relationship with my own masculine, divine masculine, feminine, and divine masculine energy, I, I don't need for a man to be perfect, and I don't need I don't need for a man to be the only one creating safety in the container because I know that I create safety for myself. And a lot of what men are needing in the world right now, which we as women can provide for men, if we are willing to do the work of balancing our own divine masculine feminine energies that exist within us, so that we don't need the man to be the only point of safety for our nervous system, we can create it for ourselves. And then we can actually support men in surrendering more into their divine feminine energy, which is where their emotions lie, which is where their hearts lie, which is where their sensitivity lies. So... I am able to and was able to guide this man around how do I want to invite erotic connection in this moment and knowing that it was pleasurable for him because I had approval for the places where he could become more attuned as opposed to judging or shaming the places where he wasn't doing it right and perpetuating a story of this man isn't connecting to me, whatever it is. So... It was such a gorgeous experience of connection and I'm so deeply grateful for it. I had a, another experience this past weekend at this beautiful art mansion in, um, in Silicon Valley. And again, it was another beautiful conscious community gathering and connected with a man who I've known through Facebook for a while, but we've never actually met in person. And again, there was just such a beautiful heartfelt care and reverence for each other and also we didn't even need a verbal acknowledgement of the erotic energy that existed between us so I got to have a similar experience of dropping in more deeply to an energetic connection with a man allowing for the nourishment of that heart energy and I also will share before he and I connected I connected with another man where there wasn't even a sharing of kissing there was simply, and I was actually very clear on, for the container I'm holding for this brother, this is you know purely sisterly, brotherly love, while also allowing for our desire, for our arousal, and the the deliciousness of connection and physical contact to be there. So with this other man, where the the man who I connected with from Facebook again we dropped deeper and deeper into energetic attunement. And uh, again, I, I facilitate ero in-person erotic attunement sessions for men in the Bay Area of California. Uh, so if you are interested in learning more about those, I invite you to private message me if you're local to the Bay or if you have a desire to fly in or come in for an extended retreat. If you're not local to the Bay, I do those as well. And I'm also running an online men's container called Attune. So there's, there's a lot around this energy of attunement 
And he and I were getting to drop into deeper states of lusciousness and embodied connection and going back and forth around also having awareness of as he and I are dropping into deeper states of energetic arousal with each other, our, our, uh, the field between he and I and the energetic third that gets created from a dynamic between two people becomes more powerful, potent, and amplified. So much so that the people in the space, like so we are energetically taking up more space the deeper we go into embodied erotic connection with each other. That's part of, you know, when you talk about sex magic and things of that nature in its highest form, when two human beings are able to be fully embodied, attuned, and connected in their erotic energy and to engage in a balanced give and take of receptive and expressive polarity, the energetic field that gets created there, the dynamic tension in that container is incredibly powerful and there's a lot of potential that can be created from that location. So it's also felt by the room around us in such a way that we're, we're impacting the other people in the space. And, you know, I'm, I'm a community leader in different, different locations in, in the Bay Area and really being aware of, okay, so how I engage in, in the embodiment and expression of my erotic energy has impact in a container. I believe that it is healing and important for all human beings, regardless of gender, to be able to engage and, and inhabit themselves as sexual beings in communal, in communal environments in ways where we don't turn on our sex at the expense of attunement and connection to our heart and awareness of the field around us. There are certain locations where that is permissible and those can be fun places to play when there's collective consent to go that deep. And when that's not necessarily what the container is, what does it look like to create uh, communities where we support the, the embodiment of our erotic selves, where we acknowledge that attraction exists everywhere Desire exists everywhere. The suppression of these impulses is not actually in service to authentic connection and community. The challenge with attraction and desire is that because there's so much shame and repression around it, we can often just assume that if I'm attracted to someone, it means that we're meant to have sex. Oh, maybe I want to be in a relationship with them. But what I believe we really need to create space for in community is to explore the embodiment of the energy of our desire, which again is what I support people in my coaching containers and my alchemy containers, is to actually create a space where you have enough approval for the desire and the attraction and the energy that exists within you to let it fully inhabit your body so you can actually learn how to wield it and be in relationship with it. Because if you resist it and suppress it, then there's just this running story that I can't embody my desire because it's not safe, it's not appropriate, and I can't control it. You're not meant to control your desire. You're meant to be in relationship with it and gain composure over of, of it and trust yourself and your relationship to your body enough that all of you can be there. All of your desire, all of your potency, all your power can be there and you can even express or make a request but you don't necessarily need to act on it. And this is how we create communities where we all get to collectively be in our power without needing to fight for power over everyone. So I want to open up the space a little bit if there's any questions or desire for clarifications. I'm feeling we're coming towards the end of the conversation for now. We're going to bookmark it. I am creating more communal intimacy containers specifically focused on cultivating the energetic aspects of intimacy and sexuality in a way that is in service to connection and community cohesion. Uh, I'm also looking for and open to receiving uh, different locations in the Bay Area that have a really beautiful energy and aesthetic appeal to host these types of gatherings. And I love the feeling of I'm open to, I'm open to, uh, you know, more formal event spaces. And I'm also really turned on by bringing these containers into, you know, more similar to large, elegant homes 
mansions, places that have a very intimate feel to them that can host probably anywhere between 30 and 40 people. So if you are in the Bay Area and you're resonating with what I'm speaking to you and you, you have access to, you live in a space that you feel could hold the energetic and the intention of these artfully curated experiences, I invite you to private message me as well because there are going to be more of the types of gatherings that I'm holding in the Bay Area uh, in 2020 because I believe this underlying energetic awareness and the, the necessity of what a, a friend of mine, Kevin Oras, describes as balancing the, or stabilizing the relational fields and learning how to bring up these, these underlying feelings, desires, energies, impulses that exist regardless of whether we are conscious of them or not. So actually working with this energy and being in relationship with it and bringing vocabulary to it and bringing embodied awareness to it so we can actually have a common language around what it is that we are creating and, and really create communities that support all of us fully being there. Because that is the location of exponential creativity, of maximum synergy, of embodied authentic expression, where there's more than enough space for all of us to inhabit our genius. And we can get out of this underlying competition, uh, insecurity, uh, things of that nature. Zara asks, what do you do if you feel you want to transform your current relationship to create more safe space for connection? Well, first of all, validate the, the feeling that you have a desire to transform your current relationship. I imagine you're talking about an intimate, romantic, sexual relationship to create more space for safe connection. So when I, when I talk to couples about this or just anyone that I'm working with, uh, a big part of what I talk about is creating allyship in relationship. The, the, the thing that can be so challenging about romantic relationships is that once we open the door to sexuality, we're opening the door to make it so much easier for projections and traumas from the past to come in and be unconsciously projected upon our partner. And so much of what the beautiful service of romantic relationship is, is we can create a space for two human beings or more can choose to consciously come together and be a safe space for each person to be able to become open and vulnerable enough to systematically dismantle the uh, defense mechanisms and trigger reactions that wind up having them perpetuate the same suffering that existed earlier on. So in your question, Zara, one of the most important things, and I say this when I work, you know, I just say this all the time is, you need to be really intentional around who you're playing with. I mean, playing this, playing in this conscious awakening sandbox with. I, I'm very selective about the people who I engage with intimately, sexually, even in friendship because I play at a very high level of awareness and consciousness and I have a very high level of energetic integrity. This doesn't mean that I'm perfect. Uh, by any means, but it means that I hold myself to a very high standard of how I show up in relationship with myself and in relationship with others. And I need to be in relationship with people who are willing to take responsibility for, um, for their side of the track, who are willing to, uh, uh, to s be honest when they don't know, take responsibility when they, they cause harm or act in a way that's unconscious and that they're really doing their underlying work so that, you know, so much of the work that I do is, is about holding a clear energetic space for other people to rise into their own energetic sovereignty. So I hold a lot of pristine energetic space. And often what can happen is that we'll get into relationship dynamics where we wind up having to hold a lot of space for another person because there's, there's a level where the person doesn't want to face their own shit. So they keep hitting up against this one location where it's like there's resistance to doing the work to break through the pattern because it would require the person to take more responsibility and feel more pain or more emotion than they believe they can feel or are willing to feel. So ideally, you're creating relationship with people who 
are willing to be in relationship with that which has been previously very uncomfortable emotionally, physically, sensationally, and practicing, you know, again, this is really about cultivating the strong masculine and feminine energy that exists within you so that both of you can cycle back and forth between being in a space, grounded space holding position for the other person's unraveling and that they can also hold the space for you to unravel. So I hope that is, that is in service to you. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Thank you so much for tuning in, human beings. I have space for uh, a couple of online clients and one in per. Oh, no, I'm going to say one or two in-person clients. I'm. I've really been feeling the the draw to become more in connection with my Bay Area community. Usually, I only work with a very small amount of in-person clients at a time, and I'm opening the door to work with a few more human beings in the Bay Area community because this underlying energetic work feels so important for the creation of community and I am in service to the creation of community. So if you are interested, regardless of gender, in the conversation that we've had and you're interested in entering into a coaching alchemy container with me in some form, I invite you to private message me. If you're interested in hosting one of these energetic uh, connection containers I was sharing. I invite you to private message me as well and please share in the comments what was resonant for you, what was relevant for you, where is this showing up in your life. Absolute pleasure to share space with you. Thank you for everyone who tuned in to the conversation. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I'll talk to you soon. Much love.